So yeah, thanks for the introduction. It's a pleasure to be here. And so as a disclaimer, the title of the talk is Superhuman Vision for Autonomous Driving. So I recycled this from somewhere else. Now, the reason I can get away with this is because I believe that for AR and VR, it's like a sandbox where we bring in ideas from different fields. So in these nine minutes, I'm going to try to talk to you about self-driving cars and why you should care. So our story starts with the human eye. It's one of nature's finest marvels. The human eye is sensitive to three colors, red, green, and blue. But with this sensitivity, we can perceive sights as beautiful as this double rainbow, as wondrous as the northern lights, and as spectacular as a sunset in Boston. Now, as beautiful as these pictures are, they raise a question. How can we get machines to perceive this visual world? How can we teach machines how to see? And teaching machines to see the world is one of the core topics in AI, artificial intelligence. And it's a hard one. If I were to show this picture to you, to any of you in the audience here today, you could probably tell me that there are two cars sitting in a parking lot near Burger King. But when a machine is asked to draw bounding boxes around the objects it sees, it misidentifies reflections in the middle car as belonging to cyclists and pedestrians. To overcome problems like this, the self-driving car industry turns to a technology called LiDAR, Light Detection and Ranging. And so in this fleet of self-driving vehicles, the apparatus on top of the roof is a spinning LiDAR imager. Here's an artist's visualization of what LiDAR actually obtains. By using the echoes of light, the car is able to navigate smoothly through urban environments and avoid pedestrians. It creates a map of the world, a map of the 3D world around the robot, and avoids the obstacles it sees. Now this is a visualization of how LiDAR might smoothly avoid pedestrians in the future. But we're not there yet. We need superhuman vision for autonomous driving to bring these simulations into concept. And so that's something our group has been working on for a number of years. So in this photograph here, we created, created an ultra-fast camera, a high-speed camera that could capture a bullet of light as it goes through a Coke bottle. Um, in 2014, we reduced that to a small prototype where we, we were able to image light in flight, light as it moves across the scene. And so we were lucky that a lot of our previous work um, has been used in a variety of applications from self-driving cars to uh, biomedicine. And you know, I think uh, uh, you know, we were lucky to get some popular appeal from our, from our work, so it was featured on the homepage of BBC. But what's sort of more interesting is where we are today, in 2018 actually, we're presenting a new technique, a new technology for LiDAR. And so the invention here that I'll talk about is how we can start to tag light at unprecedented spatial and temporal resolution. First, let me explain how LiDAR works today. LiDAR is light detection and ranging. And the way it works is that a robot, like a car, will send a packet of photons at a target. From our high school physics, we know that distance equals velocity times time. And since we know the speed of light, we can estimate how far away the target is by seeing how long it takes a photon to reach the target and back. So the principle is clear, but there's a problem. Light moves really, really fast. In one nanosecond, light travels one foot. And so the industry has done a fantastic job today of making really, really fast cameras. To put this into context, um, if light travels one foot in one nanosecond, then even if I had a billion FPS camera, I'm only accurate to spatially tagging light paths to one foot. Right, even with a billion frames per second. And so the industry has done this wonderful job of making really high-speed cameras, really, really high-speed cameras that exceed a billion FPS, and therefore we can tag light at not one foot, but let's say five millimeters, from one foot to five millimeters. And so if we have this uh, life-size bust of Albert Einstein at the five millimeter industry standard, what we end up obtaining is a 3D point cloud of the object that looks something like this photograph. And so you can see that the details in the object are lost. The photorealism is gone. And so the proposal that we uh, you know, originated here at this, in this building 
is to really exploit the physics of light and the way that light oscillates. So instead of sending this packet of photons at a target, we're going to send photons and wave fronts at a target, exploiting the fact that light is not you know, a discrete set of photons only, but also a wave. And in doing so, we end up uh, taking objects like the bust of Einstein and demonstrating two micron depth resolution, which allows photorealistic LIDAR, LIDAR that enables extremely unprecedented quality benefits. It's something we implemented on an optical table. And the goal of this technique is to eventually move to a future where we can do long-range sensing. Imagine we could obtain a view of our environmental world around us at half a kilometer away. And so these figures are from an academic paper. You can, of course, read these things online. But the end goal is that uh, we believe that we have unlocked one of the keys to enable new forms of LiDAR on self-driving cars. The industry standard today is really, you know, it's really something I would call an arms race. Uh, people don't often associate LiDAR as one of the you know, hottest areas in tech, but actually uh, Quantergy is a, is a tech company in Silicon Valley that's actually a unicorn. So they're valued at over $1 billion. People in the self-driving car industry often joke that Google is not a company that makes self-driving cars, right? They're, they have that subsidiary Waymo, right? Google, Google Waymo. They're not a company that makes self-driving cars. They're a company that makes the LiDAR on top of the cars. And that's because the LiDAR actually costs a lot more than the car. And so all these existing technologies here on the slide are tagging light at a millimeter precision. So as academics, as people who work in a university, we need to sort of see what is going to be not happening next year, but what's going to be happening in five years. By tagging light at micrometers instead of millimeters, uh, we can imagine scenarios where uh, airplanes could fly over a fruit orchard and not only map the terrain, but potentially tell which fruits are ripe. Doctors can see inside the body, deeper, potentially without x-rays. And finally, uh, a point I'll touch on is a vehicle can drive through fog. An autonomous car could see a road like this as if it was a clear, sunny day. And so the Links to these projects are, of course, available online, and those of you who are interested in being bored can, of course, check out all the equations. But I'd like to wrap it back to the point I started with, which is the human eye. The human eye, with just sensitivity to three colors, is an amazing device that allows us to perceive that rainbow. But even in nature, not just in these engineering systems I'm showing you, but even in nature, there are animals like the mantis shrimp, which have far advanced visual systems from what we are used to. Just as one example, the mantis shrimp sees 16 different color bands. Now, no matter what, we can't perceive how the mantis shrimp sees the world. We can only imagine how this animal will see something like a rainbow. Thanks for your time.